Okay, so hi guys. Uh, today we are with uh, the uh, I'm discussing the uh, model answer of day two of sociology answer writing mm -hmm. program. So I hope uh, you've uh, written the answers and submitted and got it evaluated. So today we are going to discuss the model answer. So uh, before that, I hope my screen is visible and uh, I am audible as well. So without much delay, let's start. So the question given to you was compare and contrast between sociology and common sense. So we'll briefly discuss. Uh, we'll briefly discuss uh, what is the approach that you should have uh, in uh, answering such kind of questions and answering this uh, particular question. So first, obviously, it, it has to be the standard introduction body conclusion format. In the introduction, you have to write that why sociology and uh, common sense is a matter of comparison. I mean, uh, why suddenly sociology and com uh, common sense? Why are we not comparing physics and common sense? Why not, um, you know, biology and common sense? Because so society, and the reason is because uh, both of these are evolved from uh, by observing the society, like if the way the society progresses, the way uh, things are, different social institutions are. For example, uh, marriage is a social institution, family is a social institution, or you know, religion for that matter. So we have lots of um, a, a particular body of knowledge, uh, which is common sense knowledge. But sociology is one step ahead of common sense knowledge because common sense knowledge is not scientifically verifiable. If I say in, uh, in America, uh, divorces are more than uh, over the last, uh, say, the last decade. Um, so that is just based on my common sense. A sociologist would, would uh, refer to data, have concrete, uh, verifiable facts, and only then a sociologist would say whether it's true or false. Or, uh, you know, American women smoke more. Uh, that's common sense, but that's not sociology. You have to, sociology will always question the existing body of knowledge. And that's why it's, that's the main point of difference between sociology and common sense. So uh, uh, in the introduction, you have to speak about that uh, how these both the two of these emerged obviously upon observing and reflecting upon societies these two things emerged obviously not at the same time it's basically from observing we developed something called common sense and before 17th century it was uh, considered same common sense is basically sociology but uh, as a, as uh, we had the enlightenment period that we have spoken about uh, the day before uh, it was during the Enlightenment period that existing body of knowledge was being questioned, the authority of the church was being questioned, uh, the monarchical despotism was being questioned, and all this we have discussed the day before. So uh, as a result, uh, thinkers like uh, August Koth and followed by Durkheim uh, and Herbert Spencer, they believed, they felt that uh, the scientific approach, the scientific way to uh, deal with uh, uh, or to study society uh, can like the scientific way natural sciences the way natural sciences are studied uh, that in that systematic format you can also study sociology you can also have a science of society so initially it was called social physics we have discussed about this the day before uh, and later on it came to be known as sociology so this is the basic point where the where both these things start deviating before that it was considered one so what is the basic difference? So this would be your introduction. Body, how do we differentiate between the two? I would always suggest highlight the keywords like uh, non-verifiable and uh, you know use subheadings. Like there are certain fundamental differences between the two. Use points, like bullet points. So, so uh, common sense is based on prejudice, beliefs, and non-verifiable knowledge. For example, it's a common myth that, see, we often use the term, it's a myth. Why do we say something that's myth? Why it's a myth? Because it's not empirically verifiable. So uh, anything that's not empirically verifiable is just common sense. For example, India is called the land of snake charmers, but India has a lot of things beyond snake charmers. So just because you see a snake charmer on the, 
on the streets of um, any uh, any any big city or any city for that matter in india doesn't mean that 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 is characteristic of entire india so this is again a common sense knowledge which is questioned by sociology sociology is verifiable and it's a systematic it's 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 like the study of sciences and sociology common sense is based on psychological beliefs for example suicide is in, in is entirely a uh, an internal matter but durkheim questioned this and that is why we have the durkheim study on suicide which says that suicide is a social fact next uh, common sense will take into consideration biological differences like uh, any particular behavior common sense will say okay he's a man he'll behave like that she's a woman she is she will cry because she's a woman he will uh, raise his hand because he's a man but this is also a social phenomena and not entirely a biological uh, factor so this was uh, established by mead when she studied uh, sexual behavior um, among uh um, three primitive tribes first was the apache where she said where she studied that none of these uh none of the sexes among these apaches in new guinea they showed aggressive behavior like a man will show uh, aggressive behavior a woman will be a timid um a reticent person that kind of myth does not hold among the apache because both are non aggressive um uh, similarly among the munjarako both the sexes were aggressive and among the chambulis uh it was women who made sexual advances first first for example here uh, in india we have that uh, uh, that uh, it's it's the man who should approach first but uh, it was seen among uh, chambulis generally not uh, not only in india even in western societies it's the man who should you know um approach first or we you um, use words like chivalry the man should pull the chair uh, open the door of the car so this is not something that is biological it's entirely uh, you know it's a social phenomena so the common sense knowledge that it's out of chivalry is something that is natural to men or something and all these things and these things are being challenged in in today's society and that is where sociology is progressive for example there was a you have these lots of uh, stand up comedies and recently there was a movie called mard ko dard nahi hota so there's this famous line that mard ko dard nahi hota which is not true because it's it's just um, you know uh, just a common sense or something uh, just a myth that is imposed and it's uh, given a biological shape that okay it's biological because biologically a man is stronger but that is not true so uh, these are the things that uh, sociology challenges because it study, tries to study the society scientifically second against common sense is uh, the fourth point it's individualistic uh, but sociology is universal for example uh, a person will say that i uh, for me family will consider will consist of only a man woman and his uh, child but uh, recently you have reconstituted families where uh, people are uh, living with their uh, single parent or you have uh, you know same sex uh, households where you have lesbian and gay couples where who have adopting children so um so sociology is universal it cannot say that uh, you know a family will be something like that also uh, say among the uh, these nayars of uh, south india they have the concept of tarawat where uh, the family you read in your paper too that where the family um the woman stays in 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 her brother's house and they have visiting husbands similarly uh, sociology will is based on debunking debunking means they will question the existing body of knowledge like is it really so common sense never questions as a result common sense is very static sociology is dynamic now next we have to discuss is there any interrelation between the two because the question says compare and contrast so uh, interrelation comes from the fact that basically it was common sense and sociology tried to question that so uh, essentially uh, both studied the society and thereby uh, common sense provided that fodder for um, for sociology to analyze uh, again anthony giddens the famous american uh, sociologist he has said that now sociological knowledge has become a part of common sense like post globalization there were a lot of studies on disruptions in family life and 
that those were sociological studies now people say yes divorces are common um, it, it's a post globalization phenomenon so where did this come from it was a result of uh, social research that was uh, that was going on and so, so, so sociological knowledge becomes a part of common sense knowledge in the conclusion you have to say that positivists like durkheim they totally rejected um, common sense uh, said that there's nothing called common sense again the non positivist methods like you know phenomenology ethnomethodology or interpretivism uh, of you know people like berger and alfred schutz they said that sociology was is equivalent to common sense because they did not believe in the um, you know in the in the positivist methods so positivist method is one um, x is the cause of y uh so pos non positivist will say no x is x it's not like it's not that linear that x is the cause of y x is the meaning that we whether x is the cause of y will depend on where the, what meaning we attach to y so that is called interpretivism how we interpret the social reality it's not that this is the cause of this uh society is uh, causing this kind of behavior it's not like that it's like interpretivists would say the it meaning that uh, man attaches to that particular phenomena that defines that particular phenomena so we'll come to that when we study weber so uh, that this is all about the first question coming to the second question briefly discuss durkheim's theory of suicide in the second question i have just written the key points i will not give you i don't want to spoon feed you so i'll just guide you how to use keywords and how to uh go about with uh, writing a good answer a well structured answer so the first introduction you have to write that he was a pioneer in the uh, in the field of uh, scientific study of sociology mm, uh, he was a functionalist you have to use this word functionalist to use the positivist method so these are keywords in the intro in the body you have to write that he studied suicide as a social fact he said that suicide was external it's not internal it's not something that is cooking up in the brain of the person it's external it has a coercive force just like any other social fact it has a coercive it tries to control the behavior of that particular individual and it is a very general phenomena so society has an influence on it it's not something specific to any particular individual so it's a part of objective reality what is objective reality 2 plus 2 is 4 is objective there is no Uh, no one in this world would say that two plus two can be three, can be three point four, something like that. So that's objective reality. So that's how he says. Um, and he used sociological variables like where rural, urban setting, religion, marital status in uh, in um, trying to define or trying to establish the cause behind suicide. So based on that. he you can make a diagram make a box kind of a diagram and write about the four kinds of suicides try to integrate with recent examples for example based on integration altruistic who have a very high degree of integration for example the suicide bombers uh, the killing of our former president rajiv gandhi there were these ltt people they were suicide bombers and suicide bombers are widely used by these um, these terror outfits so they are so committed to the cause that they don't care about their uh, own lives so that level of integration they have just like our soldiers egoistic who have very less level of integration who are alienated from the society for example a student who cannot crack upsc commits suicide because he feels he is outcast he is left out from the society similarly based on regulation when suddenly there is lack of regulation in the society in the social social order like in covid time suddenly there was a lockdown and lots of people lost their jobs and lots of there were there were number of incidences where people committed suicide they killed their entire families and killed themselves so that was one kind of anomic suicide try to relate with such examples only then the examiner will get to know that this person is understood and he's trying to interpret the current phenomena in terms of the theory that he has studied fatalistic is excessive regulation for example in dictatorial regimes like north korea you would have high rate of suicides um uh, do i have uh, i mean i have not looked at the recent figures but it's natural for any dictatorial regime so it it happened in hitler's germany also so 
it's like that criticism is again that the data is you have to write about any theory that you write it's important that you write one or two lines about the critiques of um, durkheim for example uh, it it is it has been said that this body of knowledge is not empirically verifiable it is because uh, it has also been found in certain places that catholics as they have said that as durkheim said that uh, since protestants they have such high level of regulation so that's why they commit more suicide but it was also seen that catholics also commit a lot of suicide and individual individualism among uh, protestants lead to more suicide that was uh, durkheim's proposition but this was again uh, challenged by main, many also they also had the, have the uh, doubt over quality of data so this you have to write one or two lines about criticism and in the concluding line right even though even though it's been criticized it still remains a seminal work where uh, empiricism empirical analysis or positivist methodology like uh, empiricism is where you collect data and analyze that that is empirics we say uh, it's not just like theory you make theory it's empirics it's working on uh, the field so to understand social reality so uh, this is how you have to approach both these answers i hope that's clear uh, so keep up the good work keep up uh, keep writing keep studying and uh, you know keep thinking and analyzing stuff thank you very much we'll again um, discuss come with another session where we'll uh, discuss the third days model answers thank you